Good evening, folks, and thank you for stopping by. I'm Pastor H, and you are watching Up Close with Pastor H. Well, I'm so glad you are, uh, have taken the time to join us today. Well, our topic today is, can God still use me even though I messed up so badly? Hallelujah. Yes, can God use you even though you've messed up so badly? Well, firstly, before we even continue with today's show, I just want to um, very quickly just say thank you to my producer, my wife, Sharon Samuels. And, you know, it's been a, it's a bit of a hard time getting the program in and, uh, you know, um, getting different guests on the show. Today I'm going in uh, solo. And, uh, you know... Uh, uh, it's it's always you know quite a quite a it's quite a task <laughs> and i thank god for it and uh you know god is using us mightily and i please uh, send in your comments send in your uh um your um uh questions and i promise we we will hear them and as much as we, uh, we can well Without much ado, what a question. Can God use me even though I messed up so badly? Well, I want to take you through firstly to a portion of scripture that I preached not so long ago. In fact, this Sunday that went past. It's found in the book of Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. And it says, I am certain that God will begin the good work within you. That's right, friends, within you and I. God began that work. What will he do? He will continue his work until it's finally finished. When? On the day when Christ, by the day that Christ Jesus returns. Hallelujah. Friends, God is in the business of healing his people. God is in the business of setting them free. Yes, we've been through so much in life. I've been through so much. You've been through so much. And you know, the devil is a, is a liar. When, when a person goes through trauma, the first thing that happens to that person, he feels oh, that, he, that God will never use him. He or she feels that, listen, I'm done with this. And, um, you know, uh, I've been hurt so badly or I've, uh, you know, gone through so much. I don't think God's going to use me anymore. That's a lie from the devil. Friends, I've messed up so badly in my past. Oh, yes, that's exactly where it is in my past. And I want to say to you today, your past will never stand in the way of your future. My past never stood and will never, ever stand in my future. Yes. And, uh, you know, we are, many of us are not proud of that past. But I'm a living testimony of how God can take what the devil tried to curse and break. And God will take it and bless it and build it. So no matter what you've gone through, no matter how uh, uh, bruised, battered and broken you are, just remember God can still use you. Yes, and that scripture is so apt for what we are, um, you know, what we are talking about tonight. Many a person start a race well. Yes, and there's many of us that, um, or I know of many people, and maybe you watching, and um, you know you've you've served God uh, wholeheartedly, and you've been very involved in ministry. You've served uh, the church well. Um, you've served the pastor, the leadership. You even the community, the congregants knew you that so well. And friends, somewhere along the line. Some circumstance, some situation prevailed and you were left behind. And it came down to you, someone condemning you, ridiculing you, and you were broken. And you felt that they abandoned you, the people that you trusted. You felt that, in, and through that, in God in some way abandoned you. Friends, I want to tell you today, God is in the business of building his people. Again, I say it, no matter how bad you 
you've gone through, no matter how bad the situation was god will still and can and will use you yes now friends i was talking about people that were so involved in ministry and for some reason fell down and uh, the relationship with the local church and the and the ministry that they were involved with and with the pastoral ship and even the community broke down and they've gone to ice and gone into isolation into hibernation friends i'm talking to those people tonight too god can still use you no matter how broken you are remember when a pot comes off the uh, shelf and it falls on the floor and many of us have fallen there and that lovely rose pot is lying in many pieces on the floor tonight you may be that pot that's lying on the floor broken in so many pieces friends what happens when you put a broken pot back together it takes the same shape as it was when it before it fell down and i'm saying to you today when god puts back the pieces that have been broken you come back to your original calling the calling the ministry that god anointed you for the calling that you had see the pot when put back together yes forms that original shape but it has many many scars on it but it's still the same shape it still serves the purpose when it's put together many people may see your scars many people may even pick on your past <laughs> like they do with me friends yes it becomes my testimony oh the scars are there and i see sometimes my own scars but scars don't hurt anymore if you have a scar on your body when you touch it it doesn't hurt you anymore oh but it's a grim reminder of what the pain and the hurt was before yes people may see that and people may say wow well, god can't use you proved them wrong but more importantly god will use you to such an extent that you yourself will be amazed friends god called me to ministry when i was 49 years old yes friends i was 49 i thought that i'm done god can't use me anymore i've gone past that point in my life you know when an airplane is taking off and it wants to abort that takeoff and it comes to a point of no return i thought my life was at that stage many people at our council will th think that their life has passed that stage like that plane that's taking off it has to take off come whatever it's past the point of no return friends would god the mere fact that you're listening today to me the mere fact that you are breathing right now there's a god of another chance yes and again i say it i'm a living example of that i've i've seen so many people that have fallen down and broken that god is still using today and yes there will always be that little pe uh, group of people that will always pick on your past that will always say to you listen we know what you did yes that's fine that's fine but i always say look what the lord has done he healed my body he baptized me and saved me hallelujah amen and i see so many people watching tonight please uh, send in your comments and uh, we're going to have a time of uh, taking your comments and questions yes and friends let's go back to where we it all began philippines 1 6 i am certain that god who started a good work in you friends god's not done with you god's not done with me you see where there's no tests there's no testimony amen i've i've brought so many guests on the show and they they have had a great testimony of what god has done yes god you have a testimony because the test you've been through is where the very thing that god has allowed he didn't send it he allowed it so that you can be a great witness for his glory for the kingdom what better way to counsel a person there's that has addiction than somebody that has gone through addiction hallelujah i've seen so many people that uh 
um, I've counseled that I have addiction. And because I've been through some of that my, myself in the past and go back and listen and play the video of my testimony and you will see um, that God has given me that anointing through my experience to minister to people with addiction and to minister to people that been involved and God uh, and for some uh, and their own actions have caused them to lose even material things friends Yes, I'm, I'm, and as I'm speaking, there is a businessman out there, in fact, a businessman and his wife, that God is talking to today. My friends, you've had it all, yes. But God says, what the canker worm, palmer worm, locusts have eaten, I'm going to replace and give you a double for your trouble. In fact, God is saying there are multiple blessings for you. Come back to him. Come back to him, friends. God wants to take what you've been through and use it. Remember, the extent of your blessing or the, or the extent of the hell you've been through is in direct proportion to the blessing that you are going to receive. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Yes, friends. I know what God has been doing. Today in, in, in the world, that remnant of people that God has called, there, there are people there that have literally given up. There was a stage in my life, friends, where I gave up. And you watching out there could be saying, wow, God has forgotten about me. You're wrong. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, at the end of that scripture, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He wants to use you for your glory. Friends, I've said this before and I'll say it again. <laughs> Peter, the disciple that messed up the most, that even denied Jesus three times. What did Jesus do? <laughs> he used him and he built, and Jesus says, on this rock, Peter, the meaning of Peter, the rock, will I build my church? Wow, what an awesome demonstration of God's love that he can still use you. Yes, what an awesome demonstration of God's love. On that rock, God is still building the church. And he said, then the gates of Hades, the gates of hell, will not come against it. And after Peter came down and he stood up with the rest of the disciples from the upper room, he preached his first sermon after the ascension. And what happened? 3,000 people. I think God gave him a thousand pe uh, uh, people, Th 3,000 people gave their life to Jesus. And I was saying, God gave him a thousand people for every time he denied him. Yes, Peter denied him three times. And friends, what happened? God used him right to the end. God's not done with you. But you may say, Pastor, I'm only in my 20s. Friends, I'm only in my teens. I'm... Uh, I'm past the hill. I'm in my 70s. God can still use you no matter what age you are right now. Friends, I keep saying that there's a void that the devil is working on and creating with this generation past mine, past those in the, in the, in the mid-50s onwards. And that generation that's here right now, below that age group, the devil is working twice as hard to create that void so that they don't... Um, come into and uh, and receive the baton from, from us so that the work of the Lord falls down. That void causes the uh, disruptions and discontinuity. Friends, and that's what, when I counsel so many young folk and in that age group, they believe that they are beyond that point of where God can help them. Young person, I'm speaking to you today. Yes, you could have messed up you could have been involved in whatever substance abuse. And I'm seeing a young lady that's out there today that had a child or a marriage. Listen, young lady, that is not a death sentence. Yes, you could have messed up and sat in your have. Young lady, God says to you, you were so actively involved in church before this whole situation. One moment of pleasure, one moment of letting your guard down Yes, I'm not going to say the devil did it. We all 
blame the devil in so many things. But I'm saying to you today, yes, we've let you've let your guard down. I too did many times before. But God is a God of another chance. I said to you, that baby, in fact, that's a boy, that boy that you gave birth to, God wants to use as well. And listen, get back to where God wants you. Get back to where God wants you. And listen, I see there's, there's a man that's watching who was deeply involved in alcoholism. Friends, God can take your that addiction of alcoholism and turn it around to get people addicted to Jesus. Amen. I want you to type an amen wherever you're watching from. And I see lots of my friends are, are already online. There are so many comments coming through. I want to go through some of them. Um, I see um, Meloshni says, God saved me from death. Meloshni is from Durban. And she says, glory to God. Amen. Yes, Meloshni. What the devil tried to kill, God has resurrected. Amen. And God's going to use you mightily. Your ministry, I say to you, Meloshni, prophetic, prophetically speaking tonight, your ministry is just being born. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And... Uh, Friends, people say, but, you know, I've been involved with so many things uh, I'm not proud of. And friends, I've counseled a person not so long ago that was involved in um, Satanism. And yes, friends, and something I just want to say, Satanism, people, it's, yes, when you've been involved in the occult, it's very hard for, and it's because you've, kind of sold your soul to the devil um those demonic forces grip you and it's very hard to uh doing it on your on your own to get rid of uh the um the hold that satan has on you but god is bigger than and powerful and bigger than all of that god is bigger than all of that god is bigger than all of that um, please, I want you someone to just uh, who is watching live just to type me an amen. Uh, I just want to see whether we're still live or not because there seems to be uh, a problem with the broadcast. If you're still there, please uh, just type an amen. And I, I know there's the, we've had problems with the uh, uh, internet today. And um, please, um, there are things, um, yes. And I know the devil is not too happy uh, with what's going on. <laughs> But God is in control. Let's go back to the topic at hand, friends. If you have a, if you have a, a comment uh, and a question, please um, just type in your um, and just type it in, and I will. Um, yeah, somebody, uh, Ruth is even typing an amen. I'm still there. That's good. Just type in your comment, and I will go through it uh, with you, friends. I just want to say, it's the devil's ploy to keep you where you are. Many of you watching out there, you're a threat. You're an enemy of the kingdom of darkness. You have been from when you were a teenager. But you've, along the line, let things happen that shouldn't have happened. Yes, and I keep saying this, God can still use you. I see worship, there's a worship leader that's watching. And the, my friend, God will, God is setting you free today. Don't give up. Don't give up, friends. Don't give up. Don't give up. God wants to still use you. God wants to still use you. I see uh, somebody, there's a pastor that was a pastor and you fell for whatever reason. It's not up for discussion right now. And God says to me, I should tell you, don't give up. Yes, you could have messed up. You could have. Yes, I'm talking to you, sir. You could have messed up. But God says, I can still use you. I can still use you. I can still use you. Friends, Jacob messed up. Jacob stole his brother's birthright. But look what how God used him. Somebody could have, you could have used, you could have concentrated on material gaining of material wealth. You could have spent and expanded all your energy and time and effort doing that. Friends, I want to say to you today, 
God can take that material wealth and turn it around for his glory. I want to just rate a testimony. I've had a drug lord come and visit me. And he said to me, while well, he met with me, he said, Pastor, I want to come out of this. I'm, I'm tired of it. Um, so the Lord gave him a word and he said, can God still use me? He loves the Lord, but he just got into the wrong path. Many of you watching love the Lord, but you've just allowed this road to take control of you. And I said to him, listen, sir, you're the precious son of the most high God. God loves you. God, God the Father sent his son to die for you and for me. Yes. And he said, but I've, I've, I've caused so much of hurt and pain. Can, will God still use me? And I said, yes, God can still use you. And friends, he's on a road to recovery, if I may call it. Yes. And God is turning his life around into, he's going to, soon you will see him, you will hear of him. God is turning his life around in such a grand, big way. God can do the same for you. God can do the same for you. People are laughing at you. People have laughed at you. Yes, people have said, listen, you're a no good, good for nothing. People told me that, friends. What can come out of you? <laughs> oh, I laugh. I laugh at the devil when I, when I say that. Because you know what? What can come out of Nazareth? Jesus Christ came out of Nazareth. A carpenter's son. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what car you drive. It doesn't matter how many bedroom home you have. Friends, when God uses you, it doesn't matter where, what you drive. As long as the fire of God is upon you and you are preaching Mark 16, 15 and practicing. Hallelujah. That's what we call to do, friends. This is the final opportunity of gathering the end time harvest of souls. And God is calling you. God is relying on you and me. Are you willing to take the, that challenge up? Are you willing to not anymore? And I, I'm, I'm going to say to you, you are not falling anymore into God's plan. What do you mean? Pastor H, shouldn't I be falling in God's plan? No. That is a filthy lie of procrastination from the devil. Yes, I mean that, friends. You are walking from today. You are living in God's perfect will and plan. No longer you're going to fall. Falling takes time. You will stumble. There's no time to stumble. There's time to walk. There's time to grab hold of the last opportunities with both hands. Both hands, friends. Because you're never going to let go. Just like Jacob said, I'm never going to let go till you bless me. Even with his hip out of joint. <laughs> Some of us need our hips out of joint so we won't run away from God. Yes, friends. And are you a God wrestler? You're not going to let go until he blesses you. Oh, but God will always honor obedience. Yes, God can still you, use you. I see many musicians, yes, that watching too. You've once been on fire. you played. Friends, there's one thing to play with your talent. And, there's another, and to sing with your talent. Yes, talent is good. But talent without the anointing is just a worldly presentation of your skill. Let me repeat that. Talent without the anointing is a worldly presentation of your skill. That's what it is. I've played many years music without the anointing. You see, because it's the anointing that breaks the yokes of bondage. The yokes that grab people. It's like the oxen yoked musicians, singers out there. It's time for the, the show is over. God's place has to be taken. It has to be. God has to take his place back. Playing under the anointing. And I say to you prophetically, when you start to play, when you start to sing, people that are sick will be healed. People that need a touch from the Lord, will be crying, will be on the floor. Why? Because your singing, your talent that's been anointed will bring down the fire of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so excited. 
and I want to take some comments and oh, oh well done Desiree you say when what heaven starts hell cannot stop yes certainly when God has started something and he as the scripture says in 1 Corinthians uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 what God had begun the work that he has begun within you he will continue that work until it's finally finished hallelujah yes this when heaven starts something god cannot stop it and susan says can god take your mess and turn it into a message of course god can take that mess friends i i, I say many a time that god is messing up your makeup yes god is messing up your makeup why so he could take your mess up and remake you up. That's right. And every setback you you face, that setback that kept you away from getting close to God, that kept you inferior. Friends, God is taking every setback and using it as a setup for your comeback. Hallelujah. Indeed, is worthy to be praised. And, you know, one of the, the other things that keep it, people away from um, being used by God is the guilt. Guilt is the one of the greatest tools Satan uses against God's people. When you walk around guilty, you're in a captured state. Yes, it's something like state capture, if you want to call it. Yes, you walk around captured. Why? Because when you are guilty, it keeps you in a state of being bound. And you say, well, it blocks your thinking. It blocks your vision of seeing what the, the bigger picture of God's plan in your life. You, When you walk around guilty, a whole lot of things get attracted to it. Guilt attracts bitterness, unforgiveness. It takes your heart of flesh and turns it into stone. And when you have your heart turned into stone, friends, you don't have a relationship with God. I've been there. You just live life with your own ability. Nobody can do that. Yes, no matter how much you try, you don't never will get satisfaction. You will always want more and more and more. Yesterday's what you had was not good enough today. Oh yes, that attitude prevails very nice when you're seeking the things of God and wanting that deeper walk with Lord. When you wake up in the morning like I do, I'm gonna I keep saying, Lord, yesterday's anointing, I want more today. But when you do it without the anointing, when you do it with a heart that's of stone, friends, because of the guilt and the bitterness and the unforgiveness, it it straight away one disqualifies you. You yourself disqualify yourself. God doesn't disqualify you. In fact, God doesn't only call the qualified. <laughs> God qualifies the calling. He alone. And you say, Pastor, I'm not equipped. You don't have to be. Oh, yes, studying God's word, learning about his word. It's important. I'm not saying that. The Bible says, study it to show yourself approved. That's not what I'm talking about here tonight. God doesn't only call the equipped. Because many people think, I'm not equipped, I'm not qualified. God qualifies and equips the calling. Every one of you has a calling out there. Every one of you has the ability. Everyone has, has at least one gift. That's what the Bible says. And you've got to use it for God. When that gift is used and used more and more for God, for his kingdom, watch the blessing flow. And the other gifts start to rise up in you. And the things that you thought you will never, that you couldn't do before, God will give you the bonus. God will give you the ability, and you will stand up just like Peter did, and boldly declare God's word. Boldly declare, saying, "Look what the Lord has done." Hallelujah! Thank you for your amen, Jesh. And certainly, you are really um, a living example of how God can take a young man. And I'm so proud of you, too, um, with what God is doing in your life. And listen, friends, you, too, can have a testimony. You, in fact, you have a testimony. You just got to let that test become a testimony. And I'm going to pray for you today, for those that are watching. 
and please share forward this uh, video this uh, this recording to as many friends as you um, as you want to i'm going to pray for you now our time has uh, as as fleeted by and i'm going and the power of god's going to fall upon you wherever you are the fire of god's going to fall upon you he's going to reignite you you know, before I pray, God, the Holy Spirit just dropped this right now in my spirit. See, many of us are like dynamite. We have the power, the dynamite we have. Dynamite, friends, is useless without ignition. Yes, that dynamite has a wig in it. Many of us, have had, we're full of dynamite in our pockets, all over ourselves. We need the fire to ignite the wig so there can be an explosion. Hallelujah. And God is igniting you tonight. Come on, let's pray. Father, I come again in no other name but of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Daddy, for the fire. And today, as I stretch my hands out to those that are watching, for those that have gone backwards, for those that have backslidden, for those that have, Lord, made themselves disqualified from doing your work, today I pray the fire of God upon their lives. Ignite them, reignite them, Lord. Ministries come alive again. Lord, those people that were once involved with the local church, today I speak the fire of God upon them lives. Touch them, change them, Lord. Get them back on that road full of fire. Burning within them and out of the belly will flow rivers of living water. They will touch many lives. They will minister to many people. Use their test as a testimony. Use the mess that they once been through as a great message to bring the lost to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Touch them right now, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Well, friends, once again, thank you for joining us. Yes, this is a show with ordinary people serving an extraordinary God. Thank you for watching. Again, share this with as many people as you can and write to us. If you have a testimony, if you have a situation that you think that you've gone through, God has brought you through and you think that and you know that will be a, uh, a great blessing to others, write to us. The numbers uh, have appeared uh, on the show. It's appearing right now. And, um, you know, we will, who knows, you could be our next guest. Friends, thank you once again. God bless.